Now, it used to be people used to say, well, 98% of diseases and illnesses are caused by genetics. Genetics, grandpa, grandma, great-grandma, mom, dad. Well, guess what? It's about 2%. Now they're showing it's not genetics, it's cells. It's the cells of the body that that's where we need to put our focus because the cells make the genes and then the genes express themselves as who we are and then they're the cells and the genes but without the cells, the genes don't exist. Okay, so and each cell, it's so beautiful. Depending on the size of your body and your health, we have between 50 and 100 trillion cells in our body. And our body, each of these cells, vibrate at 1.4 megahertz of electricity. If we have a hundred, between 50 and 100 trillion cells and it's vibrating at 1.4 vibrational frequency for electricity, we've got 700 volts of electricity in us. We are walking little suns. We are made out of the same fabric, same fabric of the planet. Now new science is beginning to see this, accept it, and understand it more. As we know medicine today, Western medicine, it's totally going to be different in five years. It's going to be a very different ballgame in how things are working. So just hang on to your shorts and get ready because things are going to be moving real fast. The immune system, I wrote down some things this morning I wanted to put in. And I, I wanted to start with a quote by a man named, thank you very much, by a man named Danny Hillis. And Danny Hillis is a um, MIT grad, uh, post-grad doctorate, PhD, and he is one of the main men with the artificial intelligence computers, and he's working with our intelligence and how to program and then a computer. And he says this, he says, the human body is a conversation going on both within the cells of the body and between the cells. In other words, he's saying, our cells are communicating with each other. They're talking. So if we have a cellular situation going on, then they're going to talk to other cells. That's how the immune system works. The body has this immunity, and the immune system, if we don't have a good, strong immune system, it's, we're dead. We die. It's just all there is to it. Right now, we are covered with millions of microbes and viruses inside of us. Everybody here has got cancer, pneumonia, viral loads, hepatitis, uh, AIDS. It's all inside of our body, but our immune system does not allow it to express. That's, that's the situation. So, what I'm saying, if your immune system gets compromised, then these things begin to manifest. And just like anything in nature, it finds the weak spot. And it goes after that weak spot. So if your weak spot, maybe you had something happen to your, your, your female organs. Maybe you had something happen when you were a child to your, maybe you got poked in the eye playing in the, in the, in the playground. That's your weak spot. That's where these things are going to manifest. So we need to pay attention to keep our immune system strong. The immune system is actually, it's more of a concept than it is a substance or a structure. The, stru the structure would be your lymphatics. Your lymphatics, your adenoids, which is right at the base, uh, the um, postnatal, your tonsils and the throat, and then we go on with the thymus and the spleen and the lymph nodes. We have this system that is physical, and that would be your lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is more of a network of fluid, and this lymph fluid runs real close with the heart. The heart has a pump to pump the blood. The lymphatic system does not have a heart or a pump to pump the lymph. So what makes it work? Long, slow, deep breathing, physical movement. If you're not breathing deep, which most people don't, and if you're not moving your body, then your lymphatic fluid is going to stagnate. Instead of going 30 miles an hour, it's going maybe two or three miles an hour on the highway. You see what I'm saying here? You have, it's a lifestyle thing. How do these cells get programmed to communicate to the genes and communicate to one another because it's the lymph and the immune system cells 
that say, hey, wait a minute, we got a viral load here, or we got a precancer condition going on here. They talk to each other. They, the Im immune system has a surveillance group inside of our body, in our blood, and it cruises through, and it finds where the bad guys are and marks them. And then it calls headquarters, and then the big guns come down and take care of it, whether it be a natural killer, an NK cell, which is for viruses and precancers, or maybe it's a, something called a basophil or an eosinophil, which are for allergies. The body marks it, sends something down, destroys it, and then retains the memory of that. So next time anything happens, boom, the body says, I know what to do. We got an invader on you know, level four, send something down there. We don't have to identify it. We already got it. It's in the computer. And bingo, it goes. That's the, the kind of the theory behind vaccinations and immunizations, to give you something so your body recognizes it, destroys it, and it puts it in the computer bank. So in case you get it, the body knows what to send down to take care of business. That's not always the situation. Okay, so with our immune system, what, you know, when is the, I always get a kick out of, no, I don't get a kick out of it. I hate this, that's the wrong way. It's kind of a little chuckle that the Hong Kong flu, the, the flu from hell, um, the, the whatever kind flu is knocking us down. It's not the flu that's knocking us down. It's here all the time. Remember, we're living in a bubble. This whole atmosphere, all these different, the stratosphere, the ionosphere, it's all within. We're, all, we're living in an enclosure. We are breathing the same molecules that Jesus breathed. We are breathing the same molecules that Hitler breathed because it's all inside, which everything is being recycled, hopefully cleaned and recycled. Okay? Now, what's going on? Why does people have this time of year, winter time, in the northern hemisphere. I mean, I look around and I see Stacy's got her jacket, Steve's got his vest on, sweaters, I got my vest on, because it's that time of year. Six months ago, we'd be out here with t-shirts and tank tops and no shoes and just hanging out. What is it about this time of year that the cold and the flu season come? What it is is very simple. The cells are programmed by our environment. What is our environment this time of year? Well, we start with Thanksgiving. Thank you. We start with Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving comes and we have a whole lot of food. And we have a whole lot of desserts. And a whole lot of friends and family, and maybe sometimes you discuss religion and politics, which is really something maybe you shouldn't do at the dinner table on Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's going to cause indigestion, but what I'm saying here is we kick it off by putting into our bodies too much food, we get stressed out, we eat too much, we drink too much, and then our body can handle the Thanksgiving thing. Okay? And then we get a little bit of a break, and we're going into the cold weather here in Maui. We have the cold seasons. I mean, just the last couple days, it started to get chilly. Before that, last week, it was beautiful. So what happens, now that the colder weather is coming in, our body has to generate more heat. The heat comes from our nervous system. Our nervous system gets the energy from our own body's supply of its natural chi, its natural energy. So it warms up. So we're not walking around, you know, and it's like if it's going to be 50 degrees out. The other day at my house, it was 59 degrees in the morning, which is not bad for Kula. But what I'm saying here is I'm not going to put on a pair of board shorts and a tank top and go walking around. It's too cold. I mean, that's how my body responds. Other people, the Montana folks, they mean, oh, man, 59 degrees. Let's get, let's get what is it so warm? We love it. You see? Their body is adapted. Adapted. That's the key. That's the immune system. The immune system helps us adapt and thrive. If we don't have a strong immune system, we don't adapt, we don't thrive. So, now the body, one, we had Thanksgiving. Two, the weather changes, so now we have all this 
this colder air coming in, and it's usually a little drier, which is also hard on the lungs. We have something called the bronchial assisted lymphatic tissue in the lungs, the BALT, which needs to be a little bit moisture. Then we go into Christmas time, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all the different holidays, eating, drinking, stressing, eating more, eating sugars, pigging out on desserts, having an extra bottle of wine with the family at the dinner table because Uncle Charlie is really funny when he's drunk and let's have a good time about it. But what happens is our immune system has to deal with these toxins. The alcohol turns to sugar, just like that. I mean, and, al and sugar is pure acid. The biochemistry of the body to maintain its health has to have a biochemistry of 7.4 to 7 points actually 7.36 to 7.5. That's where the, bi the biochemistry acid alkaline has to be on a 1 to 14 chart. And you can test it with litmus paper. It's very simple. Most of the time, you test your litmus paper, you take litmus tests on it. Around the holiday season, most people are around 5, maybe 6. And it should be 7.36. So already, the body is compromised because the body, when it's over acidic, what does acid do? It corrodes. Just look at your car battery for those who have acid batteries in your vehicle. You get the white corrosion around it. Well, if your body bloodstream and blood body fluids are at that level, then that's what you're going to happen inside with your organs. They're not going to function correctly. So, what are the things in order to maintain a proper pH balance? Proper P pH means the potential hydrogen. That's what pH stands for. We need to maintain a certain level. So what do we do? We eat more vegetables. We drink more water. We get more exercise. We get more sleep. You should have at least seven hours of sleep. The human body, the adult human, needs seven hours of sleep. Some people, I was one of those. Oh, I got five hours. Let's go. I got six hours sleep. I'm fine. Nowadays, I shoot for that eight hours. I want my eight hours. If I'm in bed at nine, I can get up at five. If it's not five, I'm going to lay in bed and go back to sleep. Because I'm an early bird, so I, sometimes I go to bed at 8, 8.30 sometimes and get up at 4, 4.30, because that's what I love. That's part of my rhythm. Find your rhythm. Find your rhythm. So, when you go to school, Ruth, and you got the kids and all the Play-Doh and the sneezing and the coughing, and they're hugging each other and they're coughing in their hands, I always teach kids and adults, because adults don't get it, cough in your elbow, not in your hand. That's why people cough in their hand and then shake my hand. Uh, and then I'll just kind of like, you know, no way, Jose, that kind of thing. So what we want to do is we want to maintain a good acid alkaline balance. Vegetables are the ticket. Now, Dr. Um, Drs. Murray and Dr. Porzorno, what they did is they, in one of the, in their book, they made numerous books, they're teachers at Bastyr University up in Seattle area. They're saying that in order to have a good, healthy immune system, this is what they were saying. Exercise. Diet. Now, diet, and we enter that category, they're recommending, and I have to agree, they're saying vegetarian diet is the best diet there is. Because especially these days, the meats that people are getting and the fish that we're getting are not healthy. There's so much growth hormones. There's so many antibiotics shot into the animals. Remember the couple of years back when the, in Oregon, there was a, a truck that overturned an 18-wheeler and all these Skittles and Oreo cookies were all over the highway? I'm not sure if anyone remembers that a couple of years ago. It was in the news. And it was a kind of a story, like, what's going on? They were all expired and everything. And they found out that they were taking an 18-wheeler, a big truck, full of candy and cookies to a cattle ranch to feed the cows. Wait a minute. Cows don't eat Skittles and Oreos. A man gets on the radio from the farm and says, well, you know, it was a rare type of thing, but we nowadays we're going to stick to what we always do. We're going to feed our cows corn. Cows don't eat corn. Cows eat grass. You see? So that's like saying, okay, everybody, from now on, we're just going to eat plastic and wax, flavored whatevers. 
We'll have a wax flavored sandwich and we'll have a plastic um, you know, fruit, just like you go to grandma's house and you get the plastic fruit in the middle of the dining table. That's what you're gonna have for dinner tonight. Plast it doesn't work. We need to eat correctly. The best thing for the human being is vegetables. Organic, local, fresh. When I lived in schools in China, and I did that for many years, they eat meat, but they eat about the deck of a size of a card of a deck of cards, maybe three times a week. That's what the meat they eat. And they usually go for the organ meat. Now this is back in the 80s before all the, the Americans dropped all the GMO stuff into that part of the world. So what I'm saying here is that if you're a meat eater, that's fine if that's what you choose to do. That's your business. But you don't have to do three dead animals on your plate every day. You're, you're hurting yourself. You're poisoning yourself. And it's been proven time and time again. Now, Oprah got sued by the Texas Cattle Ranch Association because she came out and said something similar to what I just said about don't eat the cows because they're all shot up with bovine growth hormone and, ant you know, and antibiotics. They took her to court. They tried to sue her because they said it, the, the, the defamation of, her, of their product was hurt by her speech. She won the court case. Okay? The judge sided with her. Now, what I want to say is this. Our food is extremely important to what we eat. It is good to eat smart. By that I mean fruits and vegetables, seaweeds. If you want some grains, grains are acid. Grains are seeds. They're acid. Bone broth. Bone broth from animals. If you can get some good bone broth, that's very alkaline. Acid and alkaline is determined by the minerals, not by flipping a coin or doing a pendulum or, you know, my intuition says this is acid. No, it's all based on science. Everything I'm talking to about is based on science, okay? So we, if you want to have that meat protein, because some people feel they need to have that, um, I've been a vegetarian for over 50 years. So I'm not sure if we all need to eat vegetable, I mean, meat, protein. Vegetables have been my ticket. If you need to have that, though, if you feel you need to do that, enjoy it. But not every day. Try the bone broth, the diet. Okay, next thing was keeping your hormones balanced, which is a real big topic because we have something called molecular mimicry. In other words, we have these toxins in the, in the water, the earth, the food, the air, it's called xenobiotics. Xeno is a Latin word meaning foreign. These xenobiotics, they mimic hormones in the body. We have, if you look at what's the most, what are the things that are really happening in the last 10 years since chemicals became really big in the world? Prostate problems, uterine problems, ovary problems, breast cancers, thyroid cancers. Those are the big ones right now, okay? I mean, of course, there's lung cancer because the tobacco industry gets away with selling their things. I don't understand how the government can do that, but they do that. They allow, allow it. What I'm saying is that the toxicity, the chemicals in the air, the food, and the water that we are getting is depleting our immune system, and it's a molecular mimicry, so it's mimicking an, a hormone, and it gets stuck onto the, what's called an estrogen receptor site onto the breast. Bingo. Next thing you know, your breast starts going mutated. It's, it's going south. The cells are mutating. You wait long enough, breast cancer, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, hypothyroidism, autoimmune dysfunction. Wow. We have never had autoimmune dysfunction like we do today in today's day and age. Never before. I've been doing my job here in the clinic for over 40 years. I've never seen this much of autoimmune deficiency walking in my door. And I have to go back to the molecular mimicry of the xenobiotics that are in the food, the air, and the water. We're being sold a bill of goods for a high price, and it's taking us down the river the wrong way. I think it's time, and you know the beauty of it is we have control over this. I read an article the other night. It was saying how the millennials, the age from 18 to 34 year olds, the millennials, they are changing the way marketing is happening. 
the way sales are happening because the millennials nowadays, they don't want Coca-Cola. They don't want Chef Boyardee. They don't want Kraft macaroni and cheese. They don't want these things anymore. They're not buying them. They don't want Harley Davidson's anymore. They're not buying them. There's a whole new way because now the millennials are the most populous group on the planet. So they have, the 18 to 34 year olds have such an impact on what we're doing. And that's why now they're saying, no, I want clean food. I want organic vegetables. I know when I was 18 and 20 years old, I never saw purple cauliflower in a store. I never even saw kale in a store when I was that age, back in the 60s and 70s. You didn't see that stuff. Nowadays, it's wonderful. It's everywhere. So many new vegetables. There's over 100 different varieties of apples. And yet we're only seeing maybe 8 or 10 because the other ones have been kind of like wiped out with chemicals, pesticides. So you have to pay attention to what it is we're eating, all right? I'm going to try and take a time check so I can, because I want to download. Oh, good. We're looking good. I've only been speed wrapping for 27 minutes. That's not bad. You come to my classes like you guys do at the college downtown, and I'll speed wrap you for two hours. Just, you know, it's like, wait a minute, I got to take a bread drink so I can, but anyway. Diet, please. Herbs. And I'm going to cover herbs and I'm going to cover supplements in a couple minutes so we can get that going there. Sleep. I mentioned sleep is so important. Adequate sleep. Have you know, there's also something else happening right now in this planet, and I know this is with the um, pretty much the over 50 crowd. They don't get good sleep. They don't sleep the night through. It's either the prostate is either enlarged and they got to go pee four or five times, or the bladder is in a woman, the bladder is prolapsing, and they have to go urinate two to three to four times, or more than anything, the mind is too busy. Stress. It's just stressing people out. Now, and this isn't just only for the over 50 crowd. A lot of people are having what's called maintenance insomnia, which means you wake up in the middle of the night and your mind is just buzzing. Onset insomnia is where you go to bed at night and you can't fall asleep. That's a blood deficiency. You need to get more blood building. Easy blood building things Blackstrap molasses and almond milk, it's so easy. Um, all the, I'm thinking ferrum fossa, which is a cell salt. There's so many different ways to build the blood. Um, so if you're having a challenge falling asleep, onset insomnia, that's where your blood building. But most people are waking up at the 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock hour, and they can't fall back to sleep. And they just lay there, and their mind just is so mercurial. It's bouncing all over the place. It's like a Super Bowl. It's just bing, 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 bing. The best thing you can do, what that's, that's called maintenance insomnia. In Chinese medicine, that's what's known as an adrenal off imbalance because the cortisol, the stress, the stress. That's another one of the factors in keeping your immune system strong. And this is what's happening more than ever before on the planet is stress. But here's something, what happens? What's a stress response? Here's the blood artery. I gotta put this here so it doesn't blow. Here's an artery, and this is where the blood flows. Now, this is also cool. You, you think blood flows in, in your arteries, right? You have veins and arteries. Arteries are the good blood, oxygenation of blood, and it's going out to feed all the organs in the systems. That's the blood going out. That's the oxygenation. And the venous, venous flow, the veins, is where the dead blood, or not the, the oxygen depleted blood, comes back to the heart lungs to be cleaned and oxygenated and then back into the circuit. Okay? Here's an artery, and the blood flows through an artery. But it doesn't flow like this, it flows like this, just like a hurricane. Or better yet, go flush a toilet and take a look, and you see the water spinning, spiraling, with a kind of a hollow center. That's how the blood moves through the arteries. And that's what causes the arterial pressure to continue pushing that blood. When the artery becomes somewhat congested, stress, 
Stress will take an artery and go and bring it to half the size. So what happens is that you have a hose and the water comes out of the garden hose and you have a certain volume and you put your thumb in front of the garden hose opening and what happens? The water shoots an extra six to eight feet. You have the same volume but you have a smaller opening which creates more pressure. That's called high blood pressure. That's what happens. That's secondary high blood pressure. Could be primary also. Primary is heart. That's the overweight, smoker, meat eater, dairy product person who eats a lot of dairy, milk, milk and cheese and butter and things like that. That's a lot of times primary. Secondary is more kidney adrenal and it has to do with how your arterial flow is. But stress takes your, your blood artery, your blood vessel, brings it down to about half the size and it puts the majority of your blood in your extremities. Because stress, you're either going to fight or run, fight or flight. So you have to have the blood, the energy in your legs and arms. It's the saber-toothed tiger thing. When stress is coming at you, your heart, the artery goes, collapses, half the size almost. The heart has to work harder. The blood goes to the extremities. That means the kidney, the liver, the, all the different organs in this, the pancreas, the stomach, they're losing. They're not having the blood they need. So they are now becoming deficient in reproducing themselves and regenerating and keeping the body alive. So stress, this is when they say stress kills, stress kills. Literally. People can die from stress. The fear factor. And what does that do? It pulls cortisol out of the adrenal glands and that runs in your system. Your adrenaline, right? You get into a situation and you know you can be like, it takes you hours for your adrenaline to calm down. Get, get into a car accident. And no, don't go into a car accident. I don't mean that like that. I mean, if you've ever been in a car accident, you know what it's like to have your adrenaline moving and the cortisol moving. It takes hours for it to calm down. If you're stressed and you're going to bed and you're waking up at 2.30, 3.30 in the morning because your mind is going wild, it's because your adrenals are being continually pulled more cortisol and your mind is so busy with the cortisol that you can't find that calm rest. There's a way to get involved and it takes, you got to have a strong will force. You have to focus on your breathing. Focus on your breath. Stay with long, slow, deep breathing. That will take you out of that fight or flight mode. Long, slow, deep breathing. Okay, and that's also part of what happens to build our immune system because that's what it's doing. That's why I was giving you that example of the stress factor. Sleep. Digestion. Digestion is so important. We have to understand something. 80% of our immune system is made in our small intestine. That's in our small, that's our gut. That's our digestion. 80% of our immune bodies are being made there. If our small intestine is not balanced, if it's not working correctly, we're not going to have a strong immune system. It's that simple. What throws off the small intestine or the digestive system because it goes mouth, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, out. And then the liver and the gallbladder are involved, the spleen and the, pan the pancreas is involved in this one, the throat's involved, the esophagus, and you have different enzymes in the mouth. Digestion starts where? Smelling. You smell, oh, that smells good. You start to salivate. That's, a, that's an amylase enzyme, which is alkaline, so it's going to start breaking down the carbohydrates you're going to intake. Then the food goes to the stomach. The stomach then has something called hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid kills the bugs, the parasites, on the food that you may not be eating. Everything is not clean. I remember going for a hike in the woods years ago. Guava, picked the guava, took a nice bite, and I went, this is really good. And I went to go for my second bite, and there's a bunch of worms there wiggling at me. And I'm like, okay, enough of this guava. And I'm like, holy crap, what did I do? The hydrochloric acid in my stomach took care of the bugs I ate. I'm not concerned about it. They're not going to become crawling out of my anal sphincter when I'm sleeping, which happens 
which happens, you'd be surprised how many people. I'll be honest with you. I would probably say 90% of the people right here have parasites. And you go, what? Yeah, guess what? We're harboring parasites in our gut because most people don't eat correctly. And heavy metals, heavy metals, cadmium, arsenic, lead, mer mercury in your teeth, heavy metals, cigarette smoking, car exhaust, airplane exhaust, all that stuff. Parasites live on that stuff. They live on the heavy metal detox in detoxification. So we got to pay attention on how that works. Digestion, the small intestine needs to have certain things for it to work correctly. One, it needs to have good food coming in, not food that's congestive food. Have you ever, um, in the back room here one year, our sink got clogged. So I took a plunger and plunged it. Didn't work. Took a snake, put a snake down the pipe. And for some of you know what I'm talking about, not a regular snake, but a plumber's snake. Pulled it back out. That didn't work. I had to take the pipes apart. I had to go out. Fortunately, it was PVC. It was great. Cut it, took them apart, and then recapped it. But when I took it apart, I was looking for what's blocking the sink. On the inside of the pipes, was a, the pipe is about this big. It was about this big because of all the sludge on the sides and the ins, uh, in the inside the pipe. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you cleaned the sink or two. The sludge on the inside, it was like, like, ugh, you know, like, like toffee or something. And just, and it was, get this out of here. That's what's inside your large intestine and your small intestine, ladies and gentlemen. Most people have, it's called mucoid plaque. That's what most people are dealing with. Okay? How can we get rid of it? We can get rid of it by eating more roughage. Roughage is cellulite, cellulose, cellulotic material. How do we get more roughage? Vegetables. Eat your vegetables, your leafy green vegetables, and make sure they're clean, and your sprouts, your lightly steamed broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, your baked potatoes, your yams, things like this, your pumpkins, popcorn, even that's a roughage. That's what scrapes that sludge off the walls. Now, one, clean the walls. That's where enemas and colonic therapy, colonic hygienic comes in. Number two, probiotics. A prebiotic is a probiotic health food. A probiotic is a microorganism that colonizes your gut so it can break down the food and keep the bad guys from coming in and getting involved. Probiotics, they compete with each other for space on the lining of your intestinal tract. These probiotics, what they're going to do is the, the inside of our gut, the microorganism, it's called the flora or your microbiota, which is relatively in the last five years, that wasn't any, people didn't even know about that. Now microbiota, microbiome, hot topics in medicine. And people are going, hey, wait a minute, maybe we need to clean the, the, clean the gut. 80% of the immune system's in the gut. Serotonin, you know serotonin? That's, the, that's the, um, the, the hormone, neurotransmitter, that's like, hey, I feel great. Today's a wonderful day. That's serotonin. That's made in your gut. If your gut is off, no wonder you may be depressed. Or maybe that's why you get a little angry and aggro at little things and they bug you and you snap. Maybe it's your gut. Maybe it's the parasites in your gut. A real good one is I saw a woman come into my office one time and she had a t-shirt on. It said, give me the chocolate and nobody gets hurt. <laughs> and I thought to myself, that is such a parasite candida t-shirt. That is so blatantly saying, it's, it should have said, I've got parasites. You know, it's that, that 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, I got to have chips. I'll kill for a cookie. I want some sweets. That's not your body saying that. That's your bugs saying that. That's what it's saying. These bugs will drive you to do things that you would not normally do. They will take over your brain waves and they will make you do things that you're like, hey, wait a minute, I don't eat, eat chocolate cake at 10 o'clock at night. But my body said, eat chocolate cake or I'm going to be really upset with you. My mind, whatever. Okay, second thing on these probiotics. They're the ones 
that need to be established, not the candida, which is a fungal infection, abacus, candida abacus, and not parasites or tapeworms. I sent one person, I have a cancer patient, I sent to the um, colonic therapist to get the bowels cleaned out because they were so congested. So far, she's had five colonics. She's had five tapeworms come out of her butt. About this long, about the thin, you know, real thin and flat, about this long, and they come out and they wiggle. Yeah, and this is what we are holding. Do you ever see dogs and animals? I mean, if, you're, if you have pets, you deworm your pets. Why don't you deworm your husband or your <laughs> wife or your kids? You're sleeping with them. Maybe, I don't know. Some do, some don't. But I'm just saying, we have to also deworm ourselves. We don't get it. People think, oh, yeah, everything's clean and, you know, hunky-dory. You go to a health food store, the only thing healthy in the health food store is the seaweed in the middle and the vegetables and the organic fruits on the side. That's it. All the other stuff, it's just condiments, it's dead food, it's just filler, it tastes good, it makes your taste buds work, you know, things along those lines. Unless you're making something fresh, you know, like you're making a salsa fresh, you get things like this. But most of the stuff in health food stores is not really healthy. Fruits and vegetables. But we need to have more than fruits and vegetables. Great. If your body is healthy, you can have that piece of meat. You can have that piece of fish if it's clean. You can have that nice sandwich. You can go out and get a pizza and a chocolate cake and have a cup of coffee and a glass of wine if your body is good and healthy. If it's not, you're just pounding yourself down the wrong way. It's that simple. And you can always go and get an acid alkaline litmus pack at the Dragon's Den. Check your pH. It tells you if you're acid or alkaline right there. It's got the color coding. You, if you're at 7, 2 or above, enjoy yourself. If you're below 7, you better start eating more vegetables and get the other crap out of your body, literally and figuratively speaking. Okay? Now, the probiotics are very important for our immune system. What I usually recommend is everybody nowadays, in this day and age, we need to take a probiotic. I take 100 billion CFU. CFU means colony forming unit. When I have patients with Crohn's or ulcerated colitis, colitis, diverticulosis, diverticulitis, I got them on two to three to 400 billion CFU. So those colonies can form in the gut and squeeze out the bad ones and take care of the bleeding or the inflammation or the pus that's in the pockets of the diverticula things along these lines. you got to have probiotics. How can we eat our probiotics? I, I like goat kefir. Goat kefir, goat milk has its own lactase. In other words, anything when you see when it has an o, O-S-E on the end, that's a sugar. Glucose, suc, uh, fructose, sucrose, those are all sugars. A- A-S-E on the end, that is an enzyme. Lactase, amylase, protease, lipase, these are all enzymes. So if you look at something and if it ends with an ASE, that's good. That's an enzyme. If it ends in OSE, be careful. That's a sugar. Now, sugars are good for us. I mean that. Polysaccharides are really important. That's what the mushrooms bring in. The mushrooms are by far one of your better ways to go. And I'm going to get there in a couple minutes. I'm talking fast so I can get there for y'all. The probiotic, you can get that through your goat kefir through yogurt if you like if your body can handle it the oriental doesn't handle um, dairy products china I, when i lived in china there was no dairy products you didn't go to the store there's no such thing you don't get butter milk cheese didn't exist because they don't eat it back in the day nowadays they do because the american came in kentucky fried and starbucks and all this stuff came in mcdonald the golden arches are in beijing okay that's going to kill them and they're looking for trouble. And now they're beginning to get it. They're beginning to understand that that stuff is poison for them. They don't have the lactase. Now, we, most of us Caucasian, European descent, we have that. We can break down some dairy product. If you have Oriental descent, I would be kind of careful, okay? Especially nowadays, there's so much tainted food. Our food supply is not clean like we think it is. When I was a kid, I could drink tap water. Nowadays, I wouldn't drink tap water unless it's boiled. I mean, even then, I hesitate. 
Once upon a time, when I was a kid, we used to drink water out of the garden hose. We were out playing baseball and get water from the, and it was okay. Nowadays, no way. With the chlorine and the fluoridation going on and the chemicals and the rusty pipes, what was the fall of Rome, the Roman Empire? What brought down the Roman Empire? The lead pipes. That's what brought them down. They were pumping water through lead pipes and all drinking lead water, and they went crazy. Nero played the violin when Rome burned. I mean, so the story goes. You see, it's the pipes, it's the chemicals, the heavy metals. Why is the Mad Hatter mad? Because in those days, the inside of the hat band was, had mercury in it. He would sweat, that would go into the pores. You put, and then bingo, he goes crazy. You put chemical shampoo, no, chemical hair coloring. Okay, now we all know that the skin is porous, right? Because nowadays, Western medicine knows that, so they give you the patch. The estrogen patch, the um, bath control patch, the nicotine patch. They give you the patch because it goes into your bloodstream. The skin is porous. Go right ahead and dye your hair with a bunch of chemicals, and then and it gets into your bloodstream, and that blood, those capillaries go right into your brain, and then start wondering why you're looking and you're forgetting things. It's like, where did my keys go? Oh my God, where did I put my keys? Where are my glasses? They're on your head, honey. We got to pay attention. If you're going to color your hair, please get something that's not going to be poisoning you. Okay? I mean, I dye mine gray because I'm old enough to do that nowadays. <laughs> so I can get away with it. But the point that I'm saying is these chemicals are what's causing the molecular mimicry, which is throwing off the whole cellular structure, which is causing the autoimmune diseases and the cancers. And then our diet gets thrown in there, which is malnutrition diet. We're not getting the nutrients we think we're getting, and we're getting Roundup and GMO crap and said Europe does not allow GMOs. France will not allow American dairy products in France because they know it's tainted with poison. But yet, it gets sold here all the time. People buy it. I was in Costco the other day, and I'm buying some organic berries. And there's a lady, a local lady, and she's looking, well, organic or non-organic. The non-organic is, you know, a dollar cheaper. And I, and I just said, excuse me, I says, the organic tastes better. I didn't want to say, I didn't want to give her the wrap on chemicals. I said, the organic tastes better. You may get a, you know, save a little bit of money, but you get better taste. You want quantity or quality? I'm going to buy the organic. She goes, let me have some of those. I loved it. It got a convert right there in the blueberry aisle. <laughs> But you see the point I'm saying here? And then I take my blueberries home, and I put them in a, in a, in a bowl with a couple drops of H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. And that's uh, H H2O2 is I use 35% hydrogen peroxide. Put a half a dropper in a bowl of water and let my vegetables and food sit. That will kill any kind of topical parasitic parasites, bugs, whatever. I don't know who's picking that guy. He may have been picking his nose and picking my blueberries. I'm not going to eat them. I'm going to wash them, right? Some people think a rinse is good enough. That's fine. You can use white vinegar. You can use grapefruit seed extract. I choose to use H2O3, hydrogen peroxide, 35% food grade. That's what I choose to wash my vegetables and fruits. Okay, the digestion then. Now we have prebiotics. Prebiotics feed the probiotics. Prebiotics are really important. The best prebiotic is chicory root. Chicory root is one of your best prebiotics there is. It's got, it's got all, everything you need for the body in, inside that chicory root. Um, Dr. Gundry, Stephen Gundry, is now he's like becoming very famous because he's saying you got to get your probiotic and prebiotic to stop leaky gut. Leaky gut syndrome. If, you're, if it was true, if your gut was truly leaking, you'd be in the hospital with septus. Okay? It's not really leaking, but what he's saying is that there's an ammonia gas that's coming out of the intestine and into the bloodstream, and that's what's causing a lot of problems. The digestion, the digestion, the immune system, the digestion, hormones, neurotransmitter, the digestion, overall health, the digestion. People with the little bit of the, what I call the glucose belly, when you see that hanging, you know, the muffin top thing, you got too much sugar, you're looking the wrong direction. Because if you got that muffin top going, you got too much sugar, you're looking down something called insulin resistance, called prediabetes, called diabetes. You better start turning it around and stop eating the sweets and get rid of this muffin top. 
That's what doctors do now. They don't look at the patient. They don't take the prick and put it on and see what the glucose is. They just look at the belly fat and they go, okay, we got to get this person happening with the belly fat. We got to do something. Then they, are you exercising and what do you eat? That's what they go for. Okay, so we got to pay attention to these things. It is so easy, but it takes will force because we've been patterned. From the last trimester in mothers in our mothers to the first seven years of our life, our brain is primarily in theta brainwave frequency. Theta brainwave, you got beta, alpha, theta, delta, and now you have something called gamma. The theta is where our brain, we get patterned, conditioned, programmed. We're running out programs. 95 to 90% 90 of the time, we're running out old programs that mom and dad and uncle and brother and, and the elders, the elders, the teacher, the policeman, they patterned us, and we're just running them out unconsciously. Now, that has a lot to do with our gut because that says, well, you know, when I was a kid, you know, my comfort food was whatever, potato chips and soda pop or chocolate pudding with Oreos or whatever, your comfort food. So we're going back to that program. That's where we need to stop. That's why I say it's easy, but you need a strong will force because then your will force says, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do the chocolate pudding with the Oreo cookies and a bunch of whipped cream that came out of the can. Psh. I, I, I had a laugh when I heard about um, the, the cheese in a can. How can cheese be in a can and spray it out? That's ridiculous. That's not cheese. That's chemical flavored cheese. That's what it is. And people eat that. Cheese flavored chemicals. Please, yeah, thank you. Cheese flavored chemicals. Well, maybe it's chemical flavored cheese. Who knows? But anyway, you catch my, you catch my drift. So the prebiotics are going to be a lot of your good starches. My preference is you can get a prebiotic mix in the Dragon's Den. You can also start using something like flax, flax seeds, ground up flax seeds. Um, Dr. Um, Budvik in Germany was curing cancer with people with mixing sour um, fermented cottage cheese with flax seeds and she was getting cancer cures because the calcium and the flax seed, but it's the probiotic and the prebiotic and the gut. That's where it's coming from. It's from the gut. The gut, the gut, the gut. And that's your immune system. You got to keep a strong immune system. Prebiotic, probiotic. Going through airports is another thing, too. I just came off an airplane about a week or so ago. I, on the airplane, I take something called Gan Ma Ling. Gan Ma Ling is a Chinese herbal formula that I'm, I'm, I'm taking it now. This is Gan Ma Ling season. Gan Ma Ling is an herbal formula in little tabs. I take three or four of the tabs, I wash it down two or three times a day and stay strong and healthy. On the airplane especially because people are sneezing and coughing and we're breathing what? Recycled air or air that's coming in through the jets on the wing. Gee, we're getting lots of fresh air. No wonder you see people in Asia with masks on and they have these little things around their neck that promote fresh air. What I do is I carry with me when I travel something called white flower oil. White flower oil is a wintergreen, ginger, lavender mix of different flowers, and I put a little bit right on the filtrum between my nostrils. That's all. Bingo. I put a little bit there. I take some Gan Ma Ling because I'm breathing that in, and what that's doing, it's killing airborne viruses. That's why I do that. It kills airborne viruses. It's like the Chinese um, essential oil thing even though they don't go, that's more the Ayurveda, which I would love for, if, if we have time, I'd love for Lala to get up and talk about Ayurveda because there's things that are way out of my league that she knows. And I'm just beginning to learn it. Okay. So that's with airports. Does that help you? White flower oil, Gan Ma Ling. Then don't do that. Put, put a couple drops on a handkerchief. Put a couple drops on a handkerchief and just. That's another way to go about it. Excellent. Excellent. They know what's going on. If I had a stewardess who was having reoccurring colds and influenzas, reoccurring, 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 and I gave her an herbal formula called Yu Ping Fong San. <coughs> 
It means the golden, it means the jade screen. In other words, jade is very valuable in China, and it's a screen that protects you from reoccurring colds and flus. So if your immune system is deficient, you're going to want to go with that formula, the jade screen, or it's called Yu Ping Fong San. Any, I mean, anybody, Christina works in the Dragon's Den, Ben works in the Dragon's Den, they know what this stuff is about. They, they can, they know probably know more than I do on this. Another one that you would do is you would use a Chinese herbal formula for the reoccurring colds all the time, and it's not going, it's lingering and lingering. Another formula called Shao Chai Hu Tang. Shao Chai Hu Tang. That's another one for the lingering cold. I've had this cough and cold for two months now. You need to get the Shao Chai Hu Tang formula. That will get it out of your system. You gotta eat well. Now, a lot of times, my preference is to eat warm, eat room temperature, or eat, you guys know what a pho, the Vietnamese dish, the pho? A pho is where you get a bowl of soup with some maybe tofu, we get the vegetarian pho, and then they give you a bunch of raw vegetables. You get um, mung beans and dandelions and cilantro and a jalapeno pepper, and you put that in the hot soup, and you let it sit. It cooks it in the hot broth. So you're getting the raw vegetable that's warmed up, not overcooked, you're not killing the enzymes. Enzymes are one of the most important things we need for your immune system. And your food has enzymes. Enzymes die at 118 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're cooking your food, uh -um, your vegetables, you're killing the enzymes, you're gonna get fiber, you're gonna get some nutrition, but you're not gonna get the real bang for the buck. So what I recommend to do, and so what I like to do back in here is I make a soup stock at home. I make a soup stock. It's real easy. Get your vegetables, simmer, boil them for a couple hours, strain. You know, I get my scraps, my onion peels, my garlic peels, you know, broccoli stems, stems of parsley and kale, whatever. Cook it up. I bring the soup stock in. I put it in. I have a little um, Nutribullet. I put that in, and I put some raw vegetables, some broccoli, some asparagus, some zucchini, and then I, I whip it up, vroom, blend it up, and then I put it in a pan and warm it. Just to it's just so I can put my finger in it and you know, like a baby's bottle, I'll flick it on your wrist to make sure it's not too hot. And it's I have a warm raw soup. The body has to warm up digestively. Your body has to, the stomach has to warm up to hundred degrees Fahrenheit in order for your body to break down the nutrition that's inside the food. So that's why it's really good to eat warm so your body's already going there. If you're going to be eating cold food coming out of the refrigerator, and it should be cold food in the refrigerator should be around 45 degrees to between 45 and 35 degrees. That's, I mean, that's the, law, that's the state law for cold food. It's salad bars. And, in, and it's 145 degrees or above for hot food. That's the state law in Hawaii for salad bar. If you're going to take in a, a 45 degree salad and, a, and a, something out of the fridge and your body's 98.6 Fahrenheit except for little kids they're about 100 degrees they run they run a little hotter and you drink that 45 degree and eat that salad at 45 degree then your body 98.6 45 degrees goes to your body has to come in drop its own temperature drop its own energy get over digest that and then raise itself back up What's the sum total of energy gained? Not a whole lot. It's better to just lightly steam your vegetables. Get your steam water going, put in your vegetables, put the top on, turn it off, and let it sit for a little bit. Much better to do it that way. You, 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 you're, you're cooking the cellulotic material, the fiber, which we don't make cellulose. So that's good. And, but you're getting the enzymes without killing your food. Okay? Whew. I don't know about you guys, but boy, my tongue needs to lay on a pillow for a while. <laughs> okay. I want to cover some specific remedies, um, but first I want to get back to the stress thing. You know, it's interesting. If I have a patient. He's a younger man. He's a millennial, and he came and dropped off a poster, and he's, a, he's also a disc jockey, and it said PMA. I'm like, I don't know what that means. What's PMA in big letters? And my other millennial secretary says, positive mental attitude. Don't you know PMA? And I said, I'm sorry, I'm a boomer. I don't get it, baby. 
you know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know. I'm still in the far out, groovy generation, you know. And she's saying, well, PMA is positive mental attitude. That's what we need to carry with us. We get lost in the stories in our head. We are living out these stories and we think it's real. It's diluted and we follow these stories and they go down the wrong rabbit hole. And next thing you know, you're in a big pile of muck. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's you just maybe you just got pissed off. Maybe you're jealous. Maybe you're hurt. Maybe you're grieving. And it doesn't have to necessarily be. Keep your attitude. It's the altitude of the attitude, as a friend of mine says. Keep your attitude in a high altitude. Let things go. Move, move on. This morning in my meditation, I had a long meditation. I did a loving kindness forgiveness meditation this morning. And I had a lot to forgive myself about. I spent a good over, a good over an hour just on forgiving all the pain and suffering in myself that I may have caused to other and that I have caused to myself. You got to get the, our attitude, and, and our attitude is so important. Okay, so please work with it. Don't necessarily buy what your mind is telling you. It's a, excuse my French, bullshit story. It's not real. The only thing happening right now is we are sitting in a courtyard, and I am bending your ear and wiggling my tongue with all kinds of concepts. That's the only thing that's happening. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow doesn't exist. Let it all go. The only thing happening is now time, not psychological time. Okay, enough of my little esoteric rap. Let's get into some remedies that can help you. Um, the Dragon's Den has some herbal formulas, but I'm going to give you one of the formulas that I like. It's a paste. And you can make this yourself and keep it at home. It's a real good little paste. Um, you get the herb astragalus. Do your best. I'm going to talk fast. Do your best. Um, write it phonetically. Astragalus. Angelica. And that's angel it's called Angelica sinesis. There's different types of Angelica. There's Angelica dahurica and Angelica sinesis. You want the Angelica sinesis. Eleuthero, also known as Siberian ginseng, which is the wrong name, but that's how it got its, its known. Lingjur, or the reishi. I'll call it reishi mushroom. So, Astragalus, Angelica, Eleuthero, reishi mushroom, 12 grams astragalus, 12 grams Siberian ginseng eleuthero, 12 grams ganoderma reishi, 6 grams angelica sinensis, 6 grams of licorice, 5 nickel-sized slices of fresh ginger. Simmer that in a cup and a half of water for about an hour. Low, low boil, top on the pot. Strain it. Mix it with a cup of honey. There's your immune paste. And you just keep that in your house. Take a teaspoon every now and then or half a teaspoon every now and then. Those herbs are now infused in the honey. Now, you know, I got a little bit of a bad rap with my workers here because I go in the back office and I have even my green tea, which is in Chinese a sin, I put honey in my green tea even. And they're like, what's with the honey, man? You're the honey bear. And I'm like, that's okay. I don't mind being the honey bear because honey has high antioxidants. Honey has high antimicrobial growth. Honey is now known to stimulate something inside of us called nitric oxide, which is what helps our heart with oxygen, also our muscles. If you go to the gym or if you're in the athletic field or if you're in the heart or if you're a cardiologist, you know what NO, nitric oxide, is all about. It's one of the latest things for the gym rats who are pumping iron. They're doing NO, nitric oxide. It's also in beets, but it's also in honey. So, and there's only two types of honey that I really... I, honey is good. Local organic, only get raw. Try and get local. If you get local honey, you're getting the, the, the pollen from the local flowers. So you're, if you have like allergies and stuff, that's what you want. The bee pollen and the honey from the area you're in. When I go to another area, another place, I either buy the bee pollen or I buy the honey from the area so I can acclimate my body. That's all, very simple. Now, what we want to do, the best honeys are Manuka honey. Manuka comes from New Zealand, speaking in New Zealand there. Manuka comes from New Zealand. 
The reason Manuka stands way ahead of all the other honeys is because it has such a high antimicrobial property about it. It is one of the best, it is the best honey is Manuka from New Zealand. The second best honey in the world, Lehua from the Big Island. Or if you can get it from Maui, which we don't have anymore, Ohia Lehua forests, they all got taken away, even though there are some Lehua trees. But the Big Island still has the Ohia Lehua trees, and that's the best honey to get, the second best honey after Manuka. Okay? So those are your honeys. Let me just run these by you, and then we'll start finishing up. Oop, it's after 4 o'clock. If you have to go somewhere, I'm telling you it's after 4 o'clock. Elderberry syrup. These are the ones you want to build your immune system. Elderberry syrup. It's been used in, in um, Europe hundreds of years. Elderberry syrup. Wonderful to get. Um, the Ayurvedic world, and this is where you talk with Lala. Everyone know Lala back there? You can talk to her about ginger oil, about myrrh oil, about oregano oil, oils. That's part of the Ayurvedic tradition is the oils. I recommend the oregano oil because it kills parasites. Do not put oregano oil in your mouth. It will burn the heck out of it. And make sure it's in a soft gel cap. Okay, This way it can go to your digestion and your body can tolerate it. Probiotics I mentioned. Enzymes for immune system. Enzymes. Eat your enzymes. I like to take digestive enzymes with my foods. Take proteolytic or systemic enzymes, if you got joint pain, muscle pain, you know, the, the arthritis, oh, my knee aches, this is where, you know, you get your systemic enzymes, that will help. Digestive enzymes, take with your meal. If you don't have a gallbladder, you have to take digestive enzymes that have a bile added because your gallbladder stores the bile. The bile emulsifate, emulsifies the fats. The fats that we eat from the bile that's broken down, the fats we eat, then make something called essential fatty acids and your best immune system vitamins, A, E, and D. The body will make vitamin D. It's not really a vitamin. It's a hormone because the body will make it. They, the body will make vitamin D from the sun because the ultraviolet light rays of the sun pull that out of us so we make our own vitamin D. It's from the sunshine. You know, so the ultraviolet and the infrareds are not like, oh my God, I can't go outside. No, you go outside in the early morning and in the late afternoon. That's when we go out. We're in the morning in the park at 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock doing our Tai Chi practice in the park because that's when the sun is giving us the ultraviolet so my body can produce my own vitamin D or in later afternoon. I mean, here today, midday, long sleeve shirt, hat with visor, you know, that's how my body works best. Not interested in that other stuff called melanoma and basal and squamous cell cancer. Not interested. Okay, um, vitamin C is probably the best thing you can take. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is so, because it helps the bloodstream moving, it's high in antioxidants, and it's a precursor for something called glutathione, which helps the liver. And it builds up the liver. So that's what the, um, the vitamin C. Zinc. Zinc, well, zinc and selenium, those are your two minerals that you want for your immune system. 30 millig 15 to 30 milligrams of zinc, and if you're a man, go for the 30 milligrams because the zinc is also good for your prostate. The selenium is an antioxidant. It helps the body build up its immune system. So zinc and selenium, vitamin C, vitamin A, D, and E, and another vitamin that's water-soluble, which helps the immune system, um, paradoxine, vitamin B6. Vitamin B6. If you had to just say, I got to build my immune system quick, what should I do? You should do vitamin C, vitamin B6, vitamin E, and start taking some Chinese herbal medicine to build up your immune system. That's the simplest way. And I would also recommend, my big ones are enzymes, mushrooms. The mushrooms are the key nowadays. Mushrooms are high in something called beta-glucans. These beta-glucans, what they're doing nowadays is the beta-glucans in the mushrooms build our immune system and are helping our body. This is what we're using nowadays for cancers, for autoimmune diseases, for sickness, even the common cold and an upset stomach. Take your mushrooms. The mushrooms need to have their cell walls broken. 
That's why in the Dragon's Den you can get an immune assist or Stamet 7 mushroom blend and the cell walls are broken so the body can readily use it. If you're going to cook your, if you're going to eat your mushrooms, please make sure that they're cooked. Do not eat, well you can, but it's not the best thing to eat raw mushrooms because they are fungus. They're fun guys, right? They're real fun guys and sometimes not so fun guys. But the main thing is, is that if you eat mushrooms, eat them cooked. If you, the best mushrooms are the ones that you are too woody, so you can't really chew them. That's where you cook them. Or you, you break, you, you, I simmer boil, I use a crock pot. I make my herbs in a crock pot. The Dragon's Den has got herb, herb teas that you can make for your immune system. But the, the uh, mushrooms are already powdered and encapsulated. I'm trying to get a couple more, and then I'll, we'll take some questions. Um, garlic. Yeah, it keeps the vampires away, and that's what the immune system does, keeps the bad guys away. Garlic. Sea, um, sea vegetables. Specifically, kelp and dulse. Kelp and dulse are your best seaweeds. High in iodine, good for your thyroid. Important. Your blue-green algae, your spirulina. The Dragon's Den's got the, blue, the um, green drink mix. Blue-green algae, spirulina, uh, alfalfa grass, wheat grass, barley grass. It goes on and on. <coughs> that's all the stuff you need. Um, okay, I can talk even, I mean, I still got, like I said, I, here's my last, you know, I started writing things down as I was just sitting at home. So anyway, um, we'll take a couple questions. Yes, Mer, Cassandra. I know you by both. I know you by both. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the prebiotics and the probiotics, so I bought the prebiotics in the store. Good. Here, and, uh, and I have some, uh, uh, Probiotics that are 450 billion. Excellent. So how is that, would is, I take that? Uh, you would take them separate. And then how much, how long would I take the prebiotics before I took the probiotics? It depends on the person. You see, that's what I'm saying. It depends on what's going on with the person's gut. Because the prebiotic is what you're going to start regenerating and start creating a good flora for the probiotic to come in and colonize. I don't know what the whole bottle is. Is it like a bottle? <laughs> Let me see which one you're looking at. No, with that one, the prebiotic, just follow the instructions on the package there. And I would probably run, usually you're going to want anywhere from three to six weeks. First. Yeah, no, no. I would take that at one time and then later in the day with my meal, take the probiotic. Oh, take okay. that without food, take the pre probiotic with food. Okay. Probiotics work good on a full stomach. Okay. With stomach. They like probiotics good with full stomach. Now, I have prebiotic, you can, that's a blend. You're going to blend that up and drink it. And it will set the stage. And then the probiotics come in and they play Hamlet. Okay. All right. Food. And then, so you're taking them on the same day. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because so that's a health food for the probiotic that you're going to be re, you're regenerating so it can recolonize your gut. Very important. Okay, I'm just now being tested for SIBO, uh, small, intestine. Test, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. And I may have to take antibiotics. It's not clear yet. Antibiotics kills the good, fl the good intestinal flora. The rule of thumb. The rule of thumb. Yeah, I know. The rule of thumb is that if you've had two rounds of antibiotics in a 12-month period, you're pretty much wiped out a lot of your microbiome. So would I take then the, the prebiotics and the probiotics first, and then if I do have to take the antibiotics, then I would continue for a long time after? Yeah, and the antibiotic that is anti the, the probiotic that is antibiotic resistant is called Saccharomyces boulardii. The dragon's den, they all know that. They all know that in the den. Saccharomyces boulardii. That's a, that's a probiotic that is antibiotic resistant. Dr. Boulardi found that because Dr. Boulardi was a French doctor who went to Indochina in the 1950s and found all the French soldiers dying from diarrhea. And then he discovered he made this new strain, and next thing you know, the diarrhea stopped. Saccharomyces boulardii. And that was from a bacterial, viral, giardia kind of thing. Not at the exact same time, as far away as possible. I mean, two hours after you took one. 
If you take the antibiotics twice a day, say you're taking it at 6 at night and 6 in the morning, 12 hours, right? You take in the, you try and get as far away from that time frame as possible to take your probiotic so you don't kill it. And then you just have expensive... Yeah, exactly. Kathy, you got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. You should know that. Yes, sir. And I can't hear you, and Yes, exactly. No, actually, they're okay by freezing. The cryotherapy of frozen, that's okay. It's the enzymes that actually kill. You know, it's interesting, speaking of heating and things like that, when you get a common cold, what happens? You get a fever, okay? And you sneeze, and you get sinus congestion, and your eyes get a little itchy. That's the cure. That's the body curing you. Your body is curing you. You don't break a fever unless it's like 103 or above. The body, the brain, before the brain thrives cells, it's 108 degrees Fahrenheit. 104, 103, 104, I say break the fever. And you can break a fever with just taking cold water enema, put some cold water up your, old, up your buttocks, let it out, and your fever goes... Every degree that the, your temperature increases from 98 to about 103, that's when I start breaking fevers, your immune system is doubling its speed and power. That's the body working for you. And mucus is surrounding the bad guy, whether it be a viral or bacterial, because in the mucus, it has a certain substance that kills the virus and the bacteria. So you don't necessarily want to take, go for the ibuprofen or the Tylenol. Tylenol is the worst thing you can do next to high fructose corn syrup for your liver. Those, alcohol, Tylenol, high fructose corn syrup. You're on, you're on destruction of your liver. And what's the biggest thing happening? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So with the enzymes, you want to actually don't cook them 118, 120. Freezing is fine. Let your immune system raise the temperature a little bit. Just take a lot of liquid and go to bed. Ride it out. People freak out too easy. I mean, it's like so many people freak out. I'm like, I wouldn't want you in my foxhole. I want someone who's not going to pee in their pants and run. I want to be able to say, okay, I got 101 fever. I'm going to ride it. I'm going to drink a lot of fluid. I'm going to be fine. Okay, one more question. Yes, ma'am. Vitamin C. 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 So I remember in one of your other classes you talked about the ascorbic acid. Don't do ascorbic acid. Can you touch on that? Ascorbic acid is poison. It's very simple. It's all chemical. It's petrol based. Your body, the liver has a hard time understanding what it is. Vitamin C is designated to go to your liver to make glutathione in the liver, which is the highest antioxidant, the best antioxidant for the liver. So ascorbic acid is petrol based. The body doesn't understand. We're not evolutionarily set up yet to break down all these chemicals. And we're eating chemicals all the time. I mean, just, just read things. I don't know. I don't do the emergency, so I don't know. Because people kept handing those to me, and I was, like, in the back of my brain, remember you saying something about Yeah, vitamin C is best to take vitamin C food-based. A lot of times you're going to find um, your, your, your vitamin C with ascorbic acid. It's going to say buffered, which means it's trying to save you because they know it's not good for you by itself. So they buffer it with calcium, something to help. Don't eat, don't eat things that are buffered and don't eat things that are fortified. <coughs> no, that'd be fine. It's freezing is frozen is frozen. Freeze dried is good. Yeah, you're okay. Cool. You're okay. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you got something. I hope you learned something and have a happy immune system. Enjoy the holiday season. <laughs>